Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast, a production from Empowering Pumps and Equipment as the voice of the pump and related equipment industry. Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Matthews, and I have a very special guest with me today. I am in awe of all the things that she's accomplished, but I will let her uh, do the honors to introduce herself and kind of tell us who she is and what she's up to. Charlie, thanks so much for having me on. Everyone listening, my name is Shay Eichley. I'm 24 years old. I am the marketing coordinator for the HEH group. Um, we have four companies under the HEH family. We have Ultratech. We have Kratz and Saunders, Match and Likely, and Advanced Spindle Technology. We do machines, machine tool sales, metrology sales, automation integration, and spindle repair. We represent brands like Mazak, Mitsubishi EDM, Hydromat, and a variety of others. So I'm excited to be on here talking about some things that we are doing in the world of manufacturing and some things I am going to be getting into here in 2023. Yes. Uh, But before that, we have to go into the how you got into the industry. Uh, It's not, um, it's typical, right? It's not people fall into this industry all the time, but your story is amazing. So uh, I'll just let you kind of share what you want to share here about how you got into the industry. Yeah, it's funny when you said that because I do feel like no one's like, yeah, I decided to get into manufacturing when I was 10 and then right. they like got into manufacturing later on. So yeah, I do feel like a lot of stories, people kind of just fall into it by accident. But yeah, so uh, growing up, I always wanted to be an attorney. That was like my thing. My dad and I would watch football and I wanted to be a sports agent. I was going to specialize in contracting. I mean, I talked about this forever. I started working in a law firm when I was 16. Um, Someone gave me a really good opportunity and I worked for them for a long time. Um, And then I graduated high school with my associate's degree and my diploma in 2017 and went off to Cleveland State to finish my bachelor's degree. And during my time at Cleveland State, I had an unfortunate cheerleading accident that kind of messed with all of my plans. You just never know what life's going to throw at you. And the injury happened in January of 2018. So that was my um, junior year technically of college since I went in with my associate's degree. And that required, you know, two surgeries to fix um, the injury. It was in my left leg and it was just a downhill battle from there. I developed a um, nerve disorder, if you will, called CRPS. And I couldn't walk. I was scooting around everywhere, you know, to get to work and do my thing and whatever I was doing. I, I mean, it was took a lot, you know, mentally, and I had a lot of great supporters between my family and, you know, my significant other that really kind of helped me get through what I was going through. But ultimately, that led me to manufacturing because I was not able to study or take the LSAT. And the LSAT is the exam that gets you into law school. And so I would be studying, studying, studying. And then it'd be like, oh, you have to have surgery. Oh, you have to go to the hospital. Oh, um, I can't even study because I'm in so much pain that I can't even sit here and study for this exam for so many hours. So um, my- I want to stop for just a second. Just to put I want people to understand the achiever that you were. I mean, she said she graduated- And she has her associate's degree. So I just want you to know that's like two years of community college to get that. And so people don't just have that. I mean, that takes effort and dedication and you knew what you wanted to do and you were really pushing for that. And I think that that story in itself, it just, it's so much of you, that drive that you had for success um, that I just didn't want people to skip over that, right. To really understand um, the work that you put in before going to college. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. That was a pretty big decision. My parents, um, we kind of talked and there was some stuff going on at school and I'm like, you know what, how can I get out of this school? So we decided to do that. And so full-time my junior and senior year of high school, I went to a local community college and that's where I was able to get my associate's degree. So that was a super great opportunity. If anybody listening has kids, I mean, I, if you have a college credit plus program at your high school, I would a hundred percent take advantage of that. I mean, I graduated college when I literally three months after turning 20 and I was right off into the workforce with is very minimal debt, which was awesome. And now I'm doing what I do now. So, yes. Yeah, so, so didn't get to take the LSAT pivot, say, okay, 
um, your family's in manufacturing. So you've been around it. You understand it. All right. I'll give it a shot. And yep. what is it like? What, what is it like to just, you know, shift gears like that? It, it was definitely different. I mean, growing up, I talk about it a lot, but my dad has kind of been an idol for me my whole life. And my mom's always been a huge supporter in my family, but you know, my dad would come home and he'd talk about Hydromat and rotary transfer machines. And I'd hear him talk about all these things, but until you see it in person, you don't really understand it. So I just never considered it as a career. I, I don't feel like we ever really even talked about it. And so when all those challenges, challenges were occurring, my dad was like, what about manufacturing? I mean, you like being on camera, you love talking, you are good with people, you like the technology, like, why don't you just, just give it a shot? Our marketing manager is looking for somebody. Let's just sit down and have an interview. So I remember I got my suit on. I brought my notepad. I was very serious and, um, it, it was a perfect fit, you know, and I, I even remember telling Scott Maison, who is my uh, marketing manager. I'm like, if I am not a fit, like, don't take me, like, make sure that this is something that is going to be beneficial for the company. So jumping in with two feet was, uh, it's kind of my MO a little bit. I jumped into the college thing and then the next thing and then overcoming the injury. So the challenge of getting into the industry, I think was just like a technical language jump a little bit, but I knew I had the confidence and the skills and the supporting cast around me to help me get where I am now. Absolutely. Uh, and I do want to talk a little bit more about your journey to recovery because it just, it's a testament to how strong you are and the people around you for your support. Um, but it was a lengthy recovery. So you said 2018, mm -hmm. um, and that's when it, it happened. And so, I mean, you're still in recovery. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so how do you have the mindset to and, and I know this because I, I shared with you going through the mm -hmm. surgeries, we shared this kind of pre call everyone. Um, but you, it's kind of like your whole body changes and you're like, how do I show up now? And so how do you, how did you find that? Okay. I'm, I'm not going to let this injury hold me back. How did do you feel like you found that? Yeah, I would definitely say there's good days and there's bad days. It wasn't, you know, progress is not a linear, a linear path, you know? So I think a lot of it, the foundation was laid when I was young. I was a gymnast and competitive cheerleader my whole life. And gymnastics is an extremely tough sport. I mean, if you fall, you get back up and you do it again and not fall badly. But you know what I mean? If you you don't make a good routine, you get up and you do it again. If there's a correction, you got to make it. And it's very disciplined in always driving towards the next level is always trying to be the best. And it's the same thing with, you know, competitive cheerleading. You're always I mean, it's a very, very disciplined sport. There's no attention to detail like any other sport out there, you know? So that kind of laid the ground of the discipline and drive that my, that my mind has. And then just seeing my dad and my mom do everything for us growing up and how hardworking they were, my mindset was like, I'm going to be that way too. And that was before the injury even occurred. So having that foundation Growing up, I think really, really helped. If I didn't have that, I don't think I would have, you know, kind of made it through as I have, but it was challenging. I mean, getting up and feeling like your leg is broken and you can barely even drive or go to a trade show or this or that. Um, I think for me, it was just really, really focused on today is today. Tomorrow could be totally different. And let's just keep hammering it out until hopefully something changes. And then in, um, it was August of 2021, I believe I met my pain management doctor who that's who kind of ended up changing my life. And I had this system, um, it's called the dorsal root ganglion stimulator implanted. And that's kind of been able to give me more of a life where I can wake up with a lot less pain and work out and kind of start achieving new goals and not just kind of staying in that same, let's just get past today, get past today, get past today. So, and, and that's what I, one of my favorite parts of your story is that being an advocate for yourself, you're like, there is something going on. There is something wrong. Y'all are missing it. And, and, uh, I've seen that so many times, right. That you do have to stand up for yourself and be that advocate. Um, and so I, I love all that. It, it, it kind of everything that you talk about, um, in your journey, and hopefully there'll be more stories. I'm sure there are already actually stories uh, where you can dive into that a little bit more, but it is setting you up for this 
challenge or next challenge, which is manufacturing muscle, uh, yes. which I love because it just, it combines everything, you know, yes. and you, you love to work out. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. So manufacturing muscle. So I, I've been, well, let me back up. I've been working here at the HEH group and our marketing department for we coming up on three years in September. Um, and me always striving for the next thing, always wanted to do something different, drive, dive in my feet into something else. I was started talking to my dad about doing a podcast. And so I'm like, that's what manufacturing muscle is. We're a YouTube we're going to be a YouTube podcast. We're going to be launching in July of 2023. I don't know when this episode will come out, but um, that all started. I was like, how do I come up with a name? How do I marry things that I'm passionate about? And I'm like, perfect. Manufacturing, love manufacturing, and I love building muscle. So muscle, manufacturing muscle. Then I'm like, wow, that actually has more of a powerful name than I thought it does because manufacturing is the muscle of America. And that muscle is dying. It's weakening between offshoring and aging workforce, having challenges with labor, getting young kids involved. We have this huge skill gap. And so with manufacturing muscle, we're going to be bringing anybody on the show, whether it is a teacher, an industry leader, a student, um, a machinist, anybody, salesperson, marketing, because it takes more than just people in manufacturing to have a positive impact on manufacturing. It takes parents and students and all these people. And we need to know what we need to do to get there. So we're going to be having conversations about that. We're going to be having real world conversations. We're going to be telling their stories and how they got here. Because I also think a component to it is the exposure level of exposure manufacturing needs, but also that kids sitting over there that never had an opportunity for them to say, oh, wow, yeah, I worked at a restaurant. I didn't know that I could work at a restaurant and then go into sales. And sometimes it takes that relatable story to, to have that connection in somebody's head. So those relatable stories are going to be super important to, to the podcast. I love that so much. You know, uh, sharing stories is what it's all about. Uh, we learned so much from that. Uh, I also love, you know, when you think about uh, muscle and building muscle, um, that your brain and all the things that yeah. we can learn and grow. And so I love that aspect of it too. So, so much there. I know you're going to do great on the podcast um, Thank you. and we'll be listeners for sure. And I'll put the link um, when it will go out in June, this episode, but I will put the link to the podcast when it is live kind of retrospect. I'll go back and fill that in for everyone. Yeah, perfect. And I have a website too. Anyone can click on it, kind of read what we're doing. We're going to have some feature posts up there talking about some of our first couple of interviews. So there is a little bit of content out there so far for people to look at. So awesome. Okay. Well, I'll give you the last word here. Uh, is there anything else that you want our audience to know about you or your business? Um, For myself, I kind of shared most of it. I feel you know, I'm really passionate about the industry and what I do here. I'm just looking to change the perspective and push the needle in a positive direction for our industry. Um, I feel like we are so technologically advanced, but on the inside, we need more people doing marketing. We need more people getting in social media and doing podcasts and having these things to kind of bring that other side of manufacturing up and in line with the, like the advancements of the technology that we're doing. So that's kind of what I'm here doing. Really excited for that. And with our company, I mean, I could go on and on about the HEH group. I can name all the things that we're doing, but some really exciting things that we're doing this year is we are having what's called our pigskin kickoff, which is going to be in August. We're going to have a huge open house at um, Machin Ikeley in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. And then we'll have another one at Crotts and Saunders in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So everyone listening, keep, uh, keep a look out for those links and we hope that you can come and we'll see you there. I love it. I love it. Okay. I'll do a little rapid fire with you. Um, what is your favorite book? Oh my gosh. Honestly, this is so embarrassing. The magic tree house books. I love it. I love it. I love it. Like uh, I, I, I read a lot of psychology books, like a lot of stuff about psychology and sales and like how the brain works and stuff, but like off the rip magic school. books. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, favorite music or band. Um, I really like rock music. Okay. Um, best advice that you've ever received. Mm. Probably if you're, if you are not moving forward, you're going backwards. Yep. And if you could give advice to anyone coming into the industry, what would you tell them? To have confidence in yourself and what you're doing, whether you are coming in with tons of experience or coming in with no experience 
you got to come in with an open mind, be willing to learn, know that you don't know everything yet. And that's okay. The industry is intimidating. It's intimidating for everybody that comes into it. At some point, somebody was like, whoa, I do not know what a CNC machine is. I do not know what five axis is. I will never get a hang of this. And everyone here has gotten the hang of it. So know that manufacturing is built and designed for advancement in your career. And you're going to start off low. If you show some interest, show some heart, show some love, show up on time, you know, someone is going to take interest in that and give you an opportunity. I love it. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Everybody, please share this episode and follow along and get get excited about manufacturing muscle. I know I am. Um, And just to see what you do next, uh, I know it's going to be great. So um, thank you everybody for being here today and showing up every Monday to listen to us, Uh, like, subscribe, do all that great stuff. And until next time, be empowering. Thank you. Thank you.